Welcome to a review for Finance 430 Portfolio Management today. Uh, it was a super fun class. We learned how to solve the matrix using two examples. And so um, in the first example, all four numbers are positive. But in the second example, um, two of the numbers are negative. And you see how much it makes a difference. Um, so let's just jump right into it. I'll write out our first example, the matrix, and then we're asked to find a lot of things. We're asked to find R, W1, W2, RP, Sigma, Sigma P, and COVA. Um, so we'll do it, the first example, a little slower, and then I'll kind of speed round the second example. Let's get into it. So for our first example, and I'll put, um, I'll put all my work in the link in the description if it's just easier to follow like that. But the matrix is a two by two and um, I'll write it out while I, while I explain. So in the top left corner, we have sigma one squared. And then here we have sigma two one And at first you might be wondering like, okay, what is all this two one? What are the squares? Um, as we get into the formula, you'll see it. It's ways where you can just really easily plug it in, plug in the numbers, to the formulas. And then if it has a square root, then it makes it simpler. At first, I was in class, I was like, oh, this is too, too much, but it's actually pretty cool. All right, and I'll write in orange everything that we're asked to find. And um, the PA by the COVA, um, COVA stands for covariance, which is just like um, how two variables change together. I will, yeah, so kind of how they influence, influence each other. And then the PA is just, we're putting it here for por portfolio A. Example one is supposed to be portfolio A, and then example two is portfolio B. And you're supposed to see the difference about how when you change these two numbers to negative 21, how it affects it. So let's get right into it. First, let's solve for R. So the formula, oh, one more piece of information we need. So we're going to, on the test, be given the brown info and then asked about the orange info. So let's find R first. The formula we're going to use is this. And so as you can see, we have our sigma 1, 2 up here, which is 21. So we can go 21. And then you might be wondering, okay, both of these have no square root, but this has a square root. And all you have to do is, since this has no square root, you can cancel that out by, I mean, it has no square, you can square root it. And that'll cancel it out. And it's very nice that he gave us numbers that are have no decimal, because it can be like, okay, that's probably what you do, because this will be seven and this will be six. So our r equals 0.5. Um, in sense, like conceptually, since 0.5 is less than one, we will invest in both assets one and two um, for diversi diversification. But the higher, like if it was one itself, we could just invest in one. Um, we wouldn't have to invest in both. All right, so r is 0.5, awesome. 
Let's find W1 now. So to find W1, we are going to use this formula, which is also a little long. Um, we are going to go Alright, and so we'll just take our numbers, don't square root it this time, so we'll go 36 minus, um, minus 21, and then 49 plus 36. I love that this class was awesome because it was just like a puzzle, you're just like plugging it in. So just plugging in like a puzzle like you would, 36 minus 2 times 21. You can check me on the math if you'd like, but that um, reduces down to 15 divided by 43. And this will equal 0.35. So 0.35, that is W1. I might have to erase some of this. Uh, here's the work if you need it. You can pause the video. All right, next let's find um, W2. Um, it's really simple because W1 and W2 uh, will equal one for this example and for most, unless you, I guess, had more Ws. Um, so all you have to do is go W2 equals one minus W1. So just go one minus 0.35, that's 0.65. Awesome. Nice, we are on to our RP. And so it's important too that you do it in this order because when we're finding this, we need our W1 and W2. So if you try to do it out of order, you just won't have the right information. So how we're gonna find this is this formula. And just plug in your numbers. So we know that this was 0.35, and then we get it from up here, our 10% plus 0.65 times our 8%. And for this one, it's times 10%, so just move the decimal over, 3.5 plus 5.2, and this will equal 8.7, that is our answer. Okay, this next one is a lot. It's, it's a long formula, so I'm going to try to erase most of this, and then we'll get into it. Um, I'll just put that down below. formula for our sigma p this, this is what we're going to use and I really hope we have a formula sheet on the test or this is going to be a struggle um, so we're going to do a square root of w1 squared sigma 1 squared plus w2 squared sigma 2 squared plus 2 times w1 times w2 sigma 1 2. So this is our formula. And so, yeah, I'll just speed round it. You just have all that info, so just plug it right in. That is going to equal Obviously, put this all into your calculator in the right order or it'll get messed up. All right, 
and this will reduce down to square root of 30.555 and this will leave us with sigma p equals 5.53 there we go all right we just have um, one more thing to do for problem two all we have to do now is find our covariance of portfolio b which will look like this I mean, for portfolio A. And to find that, we just go P over RP. We just found that 5.53 divided by 8.7. And that's going to give us 0.64. And what this tells us too is that the risk taken per unit of return is worth 64 cents. So um, for every $1 gain, you risked 64 cents. So that's what um, COVA of portfolio A is. And let's go on to example B now. <clears throat> Um, that's going to be the same. The only thing that's going to change is that our 21s are sigma 1, 2 and our, our sigma 2, 1, which are the same. So they're both going to be negative. And it's asking for the same thing, so I'll leave this up so we can compare because it's pretty interesting. Um, maybe I'll do it in blue this time. So we need our R, we need our W1, W2, and P. So the first thing we're going to do is, now it looks like light work compared to that long one we just did, um, we're going to find our R. So how to do that, you're going to remember this formula, sigma 1, 2 over sigma 1 times sigma 2. So that's going to be negative now, or, so our answer will be negative, and then still 7 times 6, and since this was our formula last time, we'll know that it'll equal 0.5, it'll just be negative. And since it's negative and it's less, it means there's a larger room for diversification. So this is going to be negative 0.5. All right, for our W1, um, here's our formula. And this double, since we have a minus here, it's gonna cancel out because the double negative, so we're gonna end up getting a positive answer. So we'll have 36 plus 21 divided by 49 plus 36 plus 42. This will be 57 over 127, and that'll give us a W1 of 0.45. And if you remember, all we have to do for W2 is subtract that from 1, and that will give us 0.55. You could do that in your head. All right. Now we have all the information. We need to move on to our RP. So. So we have that 0.45 and that point or point. Oh, I totally forgot. Today in class, um, our teacher was like, you don't say 0.88, you say 0.88. So I got to start practice. 0.45. So we have our 0.45 um, times our ten percent. So we have our plus our 0.55 times eight percent, and this will give us 8.9 percent.
Okay, ready for the long one? Here we go again. Ooh, we are gonna go sigma p equals, I'm not gonna write the formula. Again, you can just backspace the video. I'll just fill in the numbers for this one. Oh no! Okay, just multiply it with this. Can you see that? All right. And this will end up giving us 10.2, which will reduce down to 3.19%. So 3.19. And one more thing to do is find our COVA or covariance of portfolio B. A simple one and this gives us 0.36 all right um i hope this video was helpful this is how you or we will solve our matrices on the test to give us all the info we want and yeah have a good one